Now it is time to dive in and see how we can solve the problem in practice. Transportation and logistics operations of your company can be a competitive differentiator. So let's find out in this example how optimization can be used to optimize a transportation operation. A company has three different goods that have to be shipped from two factories to four warehouses and from four warehouses to the five customers or directly from factories to the customers with minimum cost. In this diagram of the system, the gold color arrows show the potential flows from factories to warehouses and customers, and green arrows show the potential flows from warehouses to customers. Let's take a look at the Excel workbook. This is the full analytic solver platform ribbon, which includes optimization, simulation, and data mining. Today, we're going to focus on a subset of ASP called Premium Solver Platform so we can change the product. When you are using a free trial of our software, you can also do this. So let's click on help, change product, and choose premium solid platform, click OK. Now we only have access to optimization. If you would like to review this example later, you can click on help, examples, Optimization Examples, Logistic Examples, and Transport 3. There are two goals that need to be carefully addressed in these types of problems. The total cost and service. We want to provide the service with minimum cost and ensure that each customer demand is completely satisfied. Now we need to formulate this problem, which means translating the verbal statement of a problem into the optimization language. There are three components. Each optimization problem involves one or more decisions that must be made in order to solve the problem. You can approach them with a basic question. What factors are under our control? Another common element in each optimization problem is the existence of some goal or objective that the decision maker considers when deciding which course of action is best. You can determine objective function by asking what measures are we trying to optimize? And in each problem, restrictions or constraints are likely to be placed on the alternatives available to the decision maker. You can ask what restrictions limit our choice of decision variables? to identify these constraints. Now let's find out how this can be implemented in our transportation problem. What factors are under our control? The quantity shipped. So we need to reserve cells for variables representing quantity shipped from factories to warehouses, factories to customers directly, and from warehouses to customers. Here are these variables. Factories to warehouses, factories to customers, and warehouses to customers. Also, you can see here in the model tab of task pane, three sets of variables are defined. We'll discuss the task pane and the ribbon in a bit. What measures are we trying to optimize? Each route of flow incurs a cost. The objective function is minimization of total cost of shipment along all the routes. Here is the objective function in cell C91, which is represented by a sum product function. Let's look at the first component. To calculate total cost of shipping from factories to warehouses, since the cost coefficient for these routes are defined in cells C10 through F15, we need to multiply these by total amount of product that will be determined to be shipped our decision variables for which we have reserved cells C41 through F46. And similarly, we need to add the other costs. Now on to constraints. What restrictions limit our choice of decision variables? Supplies available from each factory, the capacity of each warehouse, and the demand from each customer need to be considered. Let's discuss the warehouse capacity constraints. Warehouses are temporary holding points. Therefore, flow out from one warehouse is equal to its flow in. These type of constraints are called balance constraints. They have an equality form. Here is this balance constraint. Total warehouses equal total from warehouses. 
We have a certain supply available at each factory provided in cells A63 through A68. The total flow out of factory 1 for each product type must be smaller than or equal to the factory supply. This is the same for factory 2. Here is the constraint total from factory is less than or equal to factory capacity. And similarly, here are warehouse capacity constraints. Then, we need to ensure that each customer product demand is satisfied. Here are these constraints. Total to customer should be greater than or equal to the customer demand. For now, let's go ahead and solve the model by clicking the optimize button on the ribbon. This time, we are going to step our way through guided mode and see what it can tell us. This feature is a guide offering help for you in each step of your modeling efforts, preventing common errors. Click Continue. Two things happen here. First, Solver has analyzed all the formulas in the model and determined the structure of our model automatically. Because the right Solver engine wasn't selected, it is letting us know and giving us other choices. So I'm going to choose the engine that is offered and go on to the next step, standard LP quadratic. Now guided mode tells us that solver found the solution, all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. Let's click OK. And now we are back to where we were, without the guided mode. Here is the solution. Solver determined the optimal value for the quantity that should be shipped along each route and also the minimum cost for providing service to our customers, which is $519,700. After you have used Guided More for a while and you are solving over and over, you might want to get rid of the dialogues that you have to click through every time. To make this change, click on Help drop down menu and choose operating mode. Instead of going to expert mode, which eliminates the help, you have another choice, auto help mode, which will only bring up the dialogues when there is a problem.